Are big dicks better in the bedroom or is that like a myth? It's a myth. <gasps> what? It's a myth, the big dick myth. I'm Viola Benson. Welcome to another episode of Too Tired to Be Crazy on every Thursday with me. Today, my amazing guest is a reoccurring guest that you guys, it's one of your favorites. It's one of my favorites. It's Emily, aka Sex with Emily. Hello. Good to be here, Violet. Good to have you. Home. Thank you. So as you know, you can guess what we're going to be talking about today. It's going to be about politics. Just kidding. Exactly. <laughs> sex and politics. Sexy. No politics, just sex. I have so many questions for you. So I'm excited to have this episode. Me too. I love talking about this stuff with you, Violet. We always go there. We go there. We go deep. We always go there. I love coming on your show. She has a podcast. She has a radio show. Tell me more sex about that. Sex with Emily. I got a podcast called Sex with Emily. We've released two to three episodes a week. And I'm on Sirius XM Radio, Monday through Friday, 5 to 7 p.m. Pacific. And people can call in with their questions or email me with questions, too. Not to mention, she is a real doctor. Yes, I'm a doctor of human sexuality. I am your sex doctor. She has a PhD. Here to answer your questions. So when she's giving you sex advice, it's not like when I'm giving you relationship <laughs> advice just because I've decided I'm a self-proclaimed like therapist. She's actually a real ass PhD sex expert, human body expert. I have a doctor of human sexuality. That is true. Yeah. Yes. I didn't even know that. We've been friends for a while now. And I remember the first time she told me we were, we were FaceTiming and I was so high. Yeah. And then she told me, <laughs> she told me she actually has a PhD yeah. and I, I was would, like, yeah, it's a doctor of human sexuality. It's not a PhD, but it's the same thing. Still, same thing. I was so, in so much <laughs> I know you're shock. like, you do, you have training, but what the fuck do you think I've been doing? Why Literally. do you think I have the show? <laughs> she just thought that I was like having a lot of sex and then talking about yeah. it. But I've been doing this for 15 years. I started a podcast 15 years ago, which is insane. And well, it's because every cool. every girl now that has a podcast, I, I feel like every girl now is like, oh, I suck 15 dicks. I feel like I can talk yeah, about how to I suck, can suck dick. A dick. Right. No, you can't. <laughs> no, like, Listen, you need a lot of it. I've sucked some dicks in my day and I also have studied sex for a long time and talked to mil reached millions of people. That's pretty amazing. OK, so <laughs> the first question I want to get started with, which I feel like no matter how many times I've talked about it, I feel like it's still important because I'm still myself included and my followers like we're still trying to get through it for women in general it's how to conquer the fear of a man going down on you oh yeah fear of man going down on you well first you conquer that fear by getting comfortable in your own body and the first step to that is masturbation you know i'm a huge fan of it and learning how to orgasm and make yourself feel good because when, when the first step in that in the exploration part is to take a mirror and put it between your legs and look at your body and see how amazing it is when you touch yourself, how your clitoris swells, your labia, and understand what you need to do to give yourself an orgasm because you're responsible for your own orgasm. That is the first thing. The second thing is to be with a partner that you trust. If you're with someone who you think, oh, they won't go down on me or they don't, you know, guys don't really like it, then that, I'm assuming it's a guy. If you're with a guy, women I think might be more down, but you are... You, it's not your person. You want to be with someone who enthusiastically wants to be between your legs and give you pleasure. Now, I understand that oral sex on a woman gets such a bad rap because people always talk about how, oh, it's women think that we're dirty or we're not hygienic or why would they really want to do it? Believe me. And this is the other thing about having experience. Yes, there are men who are not into it. They're like, oh, gross or not your people. But the people, but the guys who are like, I get off on giving you pleasure and I love going down and you and eating you out. That's like, hot those are your people so know that if someone is doing it they want to be there we are clean we are our vaginas are a self-cleaning oven think of it that way we crew our ph balance it balances itself i mean make sure that you shower that you clean yourself off but there should be nothing to be uh shameful of also we're also you know, our insecurities come from maybe the taste our partner doesn't want to be doing it we covered those and then we're worried about the way our vulva looks should you taste yourself before you have sex to make sure, sure it tastes fine taste it taste it smell yeah why not but i feel like it's like it's one thing already it's like we're already so nervous about our vagina so i love that i love the um the advice on like you should masturbate but like i do masturbate and it still you weirds still me out when a guy goes down me because a first of all there's already it's already a little intimidating even when a guy there are guys out there that are like, I love going down on a girl. So 
then you, you do feel more comfortable. But then there's the guys before they've even seen your vagina. They're like, oh, it's not really my thing. I don't really go down girls. And then you just like start to think, you oh, break shit. Up with those guys. Vaginas are disgusting. He you thinks mine's disgusting. Listen, if a guy. OK, here's a newsflash. If a guy says to you, it's not my thing. Here's what you say. You're not my thing. <laughs> game over I mean I actually ended a relationship like that because I was very confused by a guy I was dating and he wasn't going down to me and granted this is my job he listened to my podcast I'm a huge fan of oral and finally I said to him we were at drinks one night and I said question I'm curious about oral sex on me is it because you're 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 not sure if I want it you're not sure what to do you're not sure or it's not your thing and he's like "Mm, not my thing and I was like this relationship is over Because for me and for many women, that's how we orgasm. That's how we experience the most pleasure. It is not through a penis. There's three ways that women are more likely to orgasm. It's a mouth, it's fingers, and it's uh, a toy. It's not a penis. Mouth, fingers, toy. That's it. So did you hear penis in there? No. No. If a guy doesn't want to do it, then he... And this is no judgment on men. And there's some women who don't like receiving oral. So... Let's match. There should be a dating app for women who don't like receiving oral and men who don't like giving it. That's a perfect match made in heaven. It doesn't have to be your person. Shout out to our first sponsor of the day. It is Honey. If you're home all day, just like me, it must mean you're doing a lot of online shopping, just like me, because it's much cheaper than therapy. So why not let Honey make things easier for you? Honey is a free browser extension that searches the internet for promo codes and automatically applies the best ones available at checkout. And it's supported by over 30,000 websites. You can get Honey on your computer by going to join Honey.com com slash violet the next time you make an online purchase honey will just pop up and all you have to do is click apply coupons and then you wait a few seconds as honey searches for coupons for that site if honey finds working codes it'll apply the best one to your cart literally that's it i recently tried it out for a bunch of christmas gifts that i'm buying for my family and for my cutie roommate francesca and i applied like literally 90 percent of the things that i bought i found a coupon via honey it's super easy it takes two seconds and why not just have it your computer anyway you guys with over 17 million members and over two billion dollars in savings honey is your new online best friend it's so simple if you have a computer literally honey should be on it it's free and it works with whatever browser you use you can get honey for free today at joinhoney.com slash violet that's joinhoney.com slash violet literally go do it right now and save some money you're welcome but going back to the shamer the third my third point about getting confident with oral is is knowing that every single vulva is different. And on my Instagram, we post this a lot, which is Sex with Emily, or there's a there's something called the vulva gallery. You can see that every vulva, and when I say vulva, it's your external part of the vagina, like your labia and all that. They're different. It's like snowflakes. It's not true. Like the women you see in porn who have the little zip, the little zipper, it's like tucked in. It's <laughs> shot from an angle. It's not real life. Your vulva, the bigger the vulva, the better. You have more nerve endings there. So I think it's maturity. It's like really educating yourself on this stuff because when you are shameful and you're not allowing someone to receive oral on you, you're actually not receiving, you actually are cutting yourself off from yeah. ultimate pleasure. Because you're, cause you're, your vulva like expands when you orgasm yes. and when you get horny too, right? That's exactly. So that's why I want people to take a look because what the amazing thing is, you're like, oh God, I don't want to look. I just pretend it's not there. If you just get curious and you put a mirror there, your phone, not, you don't take a picture, but just look as a mirror thing. And you see that you use a little bit of lube, make sure your hands are clean, always use lube, and then just start to like touch it. And then you'll see that the labia, that, that your clitoris has a hood for some women, has a little hood. And it, when you get aroused, it, it goes back, it retracts, and then it starts to swell. So it's all about blood flow and becoming more engorged with blood in turn, you know, Engorge is not a great sexy word, but that's what happens. And then it starts to swell and your labia swells. And that means that the arousal, that's the arousal process happening. And once you look at it, you're like, wow, that's really beautiful. And I remember doing this once with a guy and saying, and starting doing my studies and figuring out this process. I was like, he was like going down to me or doing something. I was like, look at this. I'm like, do you see how it swells? And he's like, I'm like, look at that. He's like, wow, that's really cool. (laughs) So I enrolled him in my pleasure. Yeah. And he was like, oh yeah, I want to see it swell. So then a guy who doesn't want to see it swell, you know what I'm saying? You got to find your person. So I think to get yeah. over the shame is to really let go because part of having amazing sex is letting, is a letting go yeah, and receiving, receiving, not worrying if this goes back to your first podcast, which people go back and listen to that I was on your show a few years ago. 
it's like a year ago a year ago was it really yeah. it feels like it was a few years ago we've done so many shows together i've only had a podcast for a year but yeah go on. it was the best <laughs> one but it was because you and i think this is so good then let's revisit it is that you were like, what about my orgasm face? Or what about blowjobs? I'm like, what about you, Violet? Yeah. What about your pleasure? And and I and I don't think that women can hear this enough. In, and you've been talking, you talk about this, about but like, you know, women are responsible for our own pleasure. Don't do anything for, don't try to change yourself for a guy. Yeah. Don't give up your pleasure for a dude. And um, because once you have really great oral, you, you won't be able to be with someone who's not into oral. No, that's so true. I feel like as much as I'm even teaching women now when it comes to dating, do things for yourself when it comes to dating. I feel like when it comes to sex, I'm still in the back of my brain. Do I feel like when I look at sex, it's almost like to pleasure the man. And I'm still learning how to go back. Like the same way I view dating is the same way in sex. It's yes. like, what about like how for me to enjoy it and make the most out of it for yeah. myself? I'm so glad we're important. having this conversation because I me think, too. you know, just because you hear something once, you need to keep remind. I have to remind myself of these messages too all the time. I mean, even though it's my 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 work, you have to embody it. I mean, yeah. I'm not better now, but an embody means it becomes part of your part of who you are. Like now, I could not be with someone who's jackhammering me, not provide, not going down on me, yeah. and isn't sex. Okay, so I have a question. This is actually really important because it's happened to me before with one of my ex boyfriends, and it happened to my roommate recently with someone she was dating. So I just need to know oh, what. Let's it, talk about it. I don't know what, what it is, but I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> Why do we get yeast infections or UTIs with certain guys more often than we do with other guys? Is it because or is it is it true that like pH balance between two people sometimes doesn't match? Yes. Well, no, it doesn't mean that it doesn't mean like, oh, we're not a match. <laughs> we should move on. Our pH balance. But it does mean whenever you introduce a new partner, you introduce new semen, you introduce a, just a new bacteria. So what happens is you're getting a bacterial infection. Um, infection, which means that pH balance in your vagina is getting disrupted by a new by, by a new chemical by by a new substance and so I, it, it's because your body isn't used to that person so I think for a lot of women they get UTIs or bacterial vaginosis um, or a yeast infection all those things when you're introducing something new it could also be you're sweating a lot you aren't showering after you work out your pants are too tight but with a new partner this absolutely can happen and in fact <laughs> We never studied this before, but there was an article that came out recently that said that absolutely now there is evidence that it's because from semen or a man's penis that that's what's causing us to have repeated like yeast infections or UTIs or bacteri bacterial vaginosis because because it's just bacteria. It's what it means. But so you got to pee after sex. Always pee. Right. Every time. Also, I before, before and after. Yeah. Pee before, pee after. No, but pee I again. have some exes where like it's pre it was very rare for me to get any type of infection down there. And I had this one ex and no matter what, it's not like his dick was too big. He had a pretty small dick. But for whatever reason, I don't know if it's because his balls were always extra sweaty or whatever it was like down there, but he was constantly giving me UTIs. Or like some type of uh, infection. Infection, and yeah. Not UTIs. A yeast infection or the other type BV, of infection. BV, bacterial vaginosis. Yeah, that that's that's what it could be. That too. It could be that their that their particular makeup isn't jiving with yours. But it doesn't mean you got to end a relationship. Eventually, we no. become immune to it. My um, vagina knew it wasn't meant to be before I realized it. <laughs> exactly. Your vagina is speaking to you. Although that's a whole other show, but it is true. Our bodies know. That's so funny. Our bodies Maybe. have intuition. We store stuff in our bodies. And this this is why the other reason why, you know, we're leading with like oral, but for women to truly start to connect this, connect their brain to their to their pelvic floor, which is the power source of, of life and of everything and a knowing that when we start to really connect and get rid of the shame, then you'll know, like you just will know who's right for you. You'll know, you'll have, you'll, you have to start trusting it, but you'll just you'll just know how to move. You'll know what feels good and you won't, you'll stop cutting yourself off from pleasure. My pelvic, so my pelvic floor is the one that's going to tell me who my husband yes, is. Yes, absolutely. If you listen She's to it. She's going to know. She okay. is. But that's why it happens and I'm not saying you need to, you know, but they could also have an infection. They could have an STD. They could have something going they on. So get a, tested. A guy could have a guy a could have a yeast infection as well. And not realize it. Absolutely. We spread these things. You could be a carrier. You know, that's why yeah. it is important to get tested. It's important to care for your vaginal health. It's important to have these conversations about safe sex with somebody, yeah. although no one wants to. Okay. What's the best way to have multiple orgasms for a woman? Mm. Practice. And... I, well, I always say practice because for the majority, for, okay, I'll, for myself, I never had it with a partner until I was able to do it by myself. 
But the way I'm going to explain to you, you can do with a partner, but I just know you, 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 I know women, I know that you're going to want to, it's, it's too much pressure when you're like, oh, I came once. Unless you have a very dedicated, devoted partner, which we all deserve, who's like, let me see it. Let me see it. I want you to orgasm. So here's what happens. Have your first orgasm. For many women, that's a clitoral orgasm. Oh, I have so much new information on orgasms. But that's when you're rubbing your clitoris and you are, and you have an orgasm. So the great news about being a woman is that our refractory period, the time that it takes to have another orgasm, is a lot shorter than men. For men, the time it takes them to come and then come again could be an hour. Some men is 50 minutes. It could be a day. So, so the good news is that women think, oh, I had an orgasm. I'm out. But if you just have your orgasm, however you have it with a toy, with a penis, with fingers, mouth, and then you just start to breathe, it's really important to breathe deep and then start to touch yourself in other areas. Um, maybe you move your fingers away from the clitoris, but you start to play with your labia. Now here's where the labia comes in. The, the clitoris has 8,000 nerve endings. Okay. But people think it's just that little that little bulb at the top, but it actually has legs. The clitoris has these legs. So here's like your clitoris and yeah. here's the vulva. And behind the vault, behind your labia, there's little legs. And that's nerve endings as well for the clitoris. So after you have that first orgasm, start to touch yourself, your labia, start to explore, tease. If you're with a partner, start to make out and keep that going, keep that arousal going. And then, because when we talked about how you're getting aroused and then the blood starts to rush, it's just getting started. For many women, it's just one orgasm is just the beginning. And then know that it could happen. And then, you know, maybe start to play with your nipples. Start to tease yourself and then, you know, you can put a finger inside for many women who it helps to have an orgasm, a clitoral orgasm first to have an internal orgasm, which right. people call the G spot. I call it the G area because um, for every woman, it's different. So to say there's one spot that you have to find it in a certain way is limiting. So I think it's patience. It's a lot of breathing. Use a vibrator. I mean, I know with a vibrator, I can have like 40 orgasms. Like I've, I've like, I could be late for work. How many, how many, how many orgasms have you had at once? I've probably had like 30. Like little tremors. One night? Yeah. With like a vibrator or something. I'm just like, yeah. I'm like, oh God, I gotta get, oh no, there's another 30? one. 30? Yeah. Oh my God. I was so proud of myself. I have four and I was Good. like, See? that's insane. Keep going. It's like what? running. It's Keep like going. I, it's like when I ran a marathon, they were like, well, I was training for it. And they're like, just run one. If you can run three miles, you can run 26. Wait, but so you're talking. You can have four orgasms. You can have 40. Wait, hold on. But you're talking, when you're saying like 30, 40, whatever, you're talking about the ones that it doesn't even come all the way to the end. Like it feels really good, but you know, you can't con like there's that one orgasm that's like explosive and then yes. there's those that are just like oh it feels an amazing feeling i feel like i reached something but i don't think i'll get to the explosive part so then you keep going it's more of those like up up like a peak a peak a peak and then again the explosive yeah. orgasm um it's i've had everything i've had internal external i've had explosive but when i'm alone sometimes with a really good toy i'll just it'll start to rise i'll have like a great one sometimes the second or third one is stronger than the first but then after that they're more like tremors, like earth, like earthquake tremors, but they still, you still feel it, but it might not be as explosive. They're like Interesting. aftershocks. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> what are some good toys that you recommend? Oh, I recommend the, I love anything by WeVibe. I always go back to WeVibe. I think a great first toy is the WeVibe Touch because it is, it fits in the palm of your hand. It's great for intercourse. It's great for penetrative sex because you can hold of your clitoris and it's also great because it covers more surface area it's like a it's about two by four inches it's purple it has little ridges on it that you can turn it around and use in different places I love the womanizer that's yeah, the yeah, womanizer yeah, is like yeah. the clit whisperer I love the the um the the oh you know what else I love the zoomio I should have brought you to because I didn't was it in my office. I'll bring you some more toys. The Zumio is really great for women who want to explore. And again, let me say one thing. Side note, vibrations feel great on men too. So use your vibrator yeah. on your partner when you're giving a blowjob, like in a lower setting. But the Zumio reminded me of that because it kind of looks like an electric toothbrush in the sense of it's long and narrow and has a little tip. But the tip rotates. So it's not really a vibrator. That's like their thing. It, it rotates, but it has a little pinpoint that since we talked about all those nerve endings, it allows you to pinpoint different areas on your vulva. And for some women, they have a lot of pain. They have vaginal pain or, or they're just areas that maybe when you were like 14, you put a tampon in and you damaged a nerve not damaged but you put to sleep a nerve right. you might not even know it so with the zoomio you can very carefully precisely hit all these different nerve endings and awaken your 
vulva and your vagina because there's so much potential for pleasure and we never even scratch the surface unless we do this work. Yeah. Masturbation work with a lot of toys. I love that. Hey guys, I'm here to talk to you about your smile today because you know those things that we'd love to do for ourselves but haven't done it for whatever reason? Well, if you've always wanted straighter teeth and a better smile, you gotta stop putting it off. Thanks to Candid, straining your teeth is simpler, easier, and more comfortable than ever before. Candid clear aligners are comfortable, removable, and practically invisible, unlike wire braces. So you can transform your smile without anyone ever noticing. Plus, your treatment is prescribed and monitored remotely by a licensed orthodontist who's an expert in tooth movement. And it's all done from the comfort and convenience of your own home. Candid only works with orthodontists, never general dentists like other companies. Plus, your supervising orthodontist will be with you every step of the way. With Candid, your treatments include remote monitoring by the same orthodontist who created your plan, so you never have to wonder how you're doing. You'll always know, and I love that. The average Candid treatment is about six months, but you're going to start seeing results way before then. It costs thousands of dollars less than braces. I wish I knew that before I got my braces years ago. Start straightening your teeth today. Right now, all my listeners can save $75 on Candid Starter Kit. Go to CandidCO.com slash Violet and use code Violet. That's CandidCO.com slash Violet with my code Violet. Take advantage of this limited time offer to save $75 on your starter kit. That's CandidCO.com slash Violet code Violet. Get that beautiful smile today. You deserve it. What are the best positions to help a woman come? Or is every woman different? Or are there actual specific positions that can help us? It's a great question. Every woman is different. Typically, the most common position is woman on top. And that's because you're able to control the speed and the depth and the pace of it. You know, the and how you move, the positioning, the speed, the pace. And you can grind your clitoris on top of your... I'm assuming we're, we're talking about heterosexual yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, couples. So it's about a grinding, like a moving back and forth um, from anyone getting your clitoris just just right. So I think that woman on top, another uh, way is, you know, for some women, doggy style, though that's not really the most popular, but you have more access to your clitoris. Remember oh. this, most women, I, I could say, like, put this on my fucking tombstone, 20% of women are going to orgasm during sex, during penetrative sex, only 20%. So... And of all those women, it's not every single time. So any position that allows you to have more access to your clitoris or your partner to stimulate your clitoris is going to do the trick. Interesting. Okay, so question. Yes, dear. Why do girls love big dicks? Is, is, are big dicks better in the bedroom or is that like a myth? It's a myth. <gasps> what? It's a myth, the big dick myth. Now, big what dick the myth. truth is, is that some women... Our size queens, they love it, just like men like large breasts. Some men like large breasts and not small breasts. We probably wouldn't attract the same guys. Right. Because your breasts are amazing. Mine are amazingly, but, but small. So, so it's the same kind of thing. There's a preference. Now, I have to tell you this. In the 15 years I've been doing this, and this is the truth, I, have rece- I receive hundreds of email questions every day. People call in. It is always a problem with a large penis. Penises can be too big yeah. and it's painful. And those guys suffer. Those guys are like, I can't find someone. It really hurts. But like we think that's a joke, but it's actually it's not, a real No, thing. it's like they can't get it in. And then women tear and they can't experience the penetration. And so I, I mean, yes, it feels great to be filled up in a big penis. For many women, that's preferable. But for some women, it's painful. If we talked about 80% of women experience pain with sex Wait, time. Is it easier than, is it easier to come with a big nope. dick or... Then nope. why do women love big dicks? I think because it's because of culture. So it's just a thing that it's you're a, just like, oh, I want me a big dick. It doesn't yeah. actually mean anything. But for some women, so listen, the, the, the most sensitive part of your vulva is the inner two thirds of your vagina. The internal part is the inner two thirds, meaning you just need a finger. You need a long tongue. Even a small penis can do that. And so wow. it's more about, and, and granted, there's other kinds of orgasms. You can have a cervical orgasm. You can, I mean, because women, listen, we don't explore. So this, there's a lot of possibilities, but I think that women like it because it, it, it can feel good and it can fill you up. But fill I think up. that we would rather take it. Sometimes I think we'd rather take a great lover all around, someone who cares about our pleasure, who can, you knows how to use their penis, who knows how to use their hands and their mouth over a huge penis any day. Yeah, because sometimes it feels like guys with big dicks feel like they don't really have to do any work. They're like, I just, I showed up. I have a big dick. You're welcome. Big dick energy. But you know what it is? 
let me tell you this. The only reason why, if this is true, this lore that guys with big dicks can just do whatever they want, it's because women are giving them the power. Women are saying, yeah, I'm going to let you off. I'm going to let you come in and Jack Henry and roll over because I love your big dick. Well, why would you love his big dick if you're not getting the benefits from it? That Fuck is, that guy. That is very true. Fuck that guy. <laughs> not we literally, perpetuate though. perpetuate it. And let me tell you this. There would be more men who, not only are they into oral, they would see oral as a requirement, like getting a, a college degree or getting their driver's license. They'd be like, I need to become a master of oral because that's the only way I'm going to get the woman that I want. So, but we, and again, it's because we didn't know. And this is why I love that we're talking about this because it starts with you. It starts with you. It starts with saying, that was nothing. Like, where are you going? Like, or, or she comes first. I mean, that's yeah. a great motto to live by that prioritize your orgasm and you won't let anyone get away with not giving you pleasure. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I agree with that. Like I, it's a training. I had that one friend who always says like, um, like I have to come every time I have sex with a guy. Like if I don't come, like yeah. no one's going to come. Yep. Like I better come first. Yeah. And let's I love be that girl. Like, let's be that friend. Method. Yeah. And listen, I don't think you should have shame because what, I mean, this could be another six podcast, but let me just tell you this is that, is that it's not your fault. Women were not taught this. And every, if we did learn about sex, it is always oriented towards penetration always it's like that's the main event and foreplay comes before the main event but if you look at all the studies and all the research and what's actually true the penis is analogous to the clitoris meaning the clitoris erect has erectile tissue and so does the penis the clitoris expands and grows so does the penis but penetration doesn't hit the clitoris but since we live in a patriarchal society and all porn is written by men, movies uh, are written by men, but it's, it's not accurate information. So the more women can listen to this podcast and play it for your guy and say like, this is a fact. I am the sex doctor. I'm telling you what is truth. This is not, I did not make this up. Um, it's just because w- women need to start taking control of their own orgasms. Okay. Like speaking of it being a man world, I do want to talk about penises for a second. Let's do it. Can anyone be a deep throater? Can anyone become a deep throater? Or like, is it not for everyone? Why do they want to become a deep throater? Porn, obviously. See, this is not porn. Okay, but okay. So, okay. okay. Let me yes, just show you something. you can work something. on your gag reflex. But I don't think that it, it's what men want. Okay, so tell me if this works. So I saw this on TikTok and I wanted to show it to my followers. I recently tried to show it, the TikTok to my followers. And then some girls, I posted the TikTok on my podcast instagram and some girls commented back saying thanks i tried this and i threw up on my boyfriend so this is what i wanted to <laughs> okay, show you set so, the record straight okay so you put your thumb uh you put your thumb like this in your finger and then you put your other four fingers over your thumb then you put your finger the other finger on your chin you put the other finger on your chin then you go like this you 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 go here hold on when you go here and then <gasps> No, it didn't. don't do it. Don't don't try this at home, <laughs> Ew. babe. What so is, listen, where th- did this finger I don't go? know. I don't know. You I don't put know where hands, I put this finger. Put your hands are. That's so, so bad. But but babe, listen, sweetheart. No, <coughs> no, don't I try just... that at home. If you want to improve your gag reflex, there is something you can do. Okay, it didn't work for me. Yeah, <laughs> you can go take ahead. a. I'm trying to remember what this. I haven't taught this in a while because I'm not all about it because I think that it's porn. She's like, I gotta go. I gotta choke on his cock and because that's what you see in your eyes after water and yes it's so embarrassing it's, if the guy has a small penis and then you have to pretend to choke on it choke. i've done that but guys said that they actually <laughs> they don't want you because they're like i know you're not choking <laughs> it's like it's embarrassing because i feel like do they know i'm lying but also like guys said if they have a small dick they don't like if you if you manage to go all the way down and deep throw their dick because then they know it's small you're like i you managed to go mouth, all the way down a sandwich and, and your dick's going in my mouth <laughs> No, you can. If you manage to go all the way down, it's like we get it. Have a small. Yeah, you're like licking his anus with your tongue (laughs) all the way down. You're like, you're like like on his knees. Yeah, he's like, I don't want you to deep throw that bad. I don't think I. Again, you guys, this is what we have to show our reality as a woman. Like this is the what I want to implore everyone that. And I'm not saying you should never. I'm not like the anti like anti deep throw. Like no, I'm not that. I'm not the sex police. But what I'm saying is that. Well, I kind of am. But what I'm saying is, you know, that that it's um I think that the really important part of giving a great blowjob is using your hands and your mouth. And that the most sensitive part of the penis is the frenulum, which is that part on the underside of the penis where the shaft meets the tip. There's a little area there, um, and the tip. So typically it's the tip and that little tiny area of the frenulum has also has erectile tissue. It's actually where um men become 
uh, circumcised. It still has a little bit of erectile tissue left. So the point is, use your tongue swirled around. Make sure you even have grip on the penis. You go up and down. And don't neglect the balls. Don't neglect. Well, no. It's a ball by ball, case by case basis. Some men don't like their balls touched. Ask them. Say, cup it and say, does that feel good? <laughs> does this feel good? Can you cuff for me? Yeah. Cough a little bit. But mm-hmm. you don't want to like squeeze or pull. Um, you want to cup it and be like, how is that? I mean, I think I was talking to a guy recently actually about this very thing when I had his balls in my hand. And I said, <laughs> I said, what, what do you like? He's like, two hands is better than one always. And like I had one on his hand and then one is, I, we were just talking about it. He likes his balls. Like he wants them like held and like up closer to the like just but then I've had guys who are like don't touch the balls oh because they're sensitive or something yeah and every person's different so what a great thing is like you get to learn with each new partner what they're into so there are no yeah. rules I like um, using my vibrator a little bit on the guy's balls yes use your vibrator on the guy's balls on their shaft when you're giving a blowjob you can also put it in your cheek so your cheek wow. vibrates I never knew that yes girl or you can put it underneath here but I don't think that's <laughs> oh, underneath here it's like a mic <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's funny I'm, yeah. i'll try that next time uh, I but the deep throating so thing the gagging thing if you want to circle back to that there is something you could do to inc- so usually women have a hard time with it because of their gag reflex yes so usually why we we gag is because we're just we haven't worked out our gag reflex so here's an exercise to do it takes about a month it could take you a week just everyone's different take a toothbrush like a soft toothbrush and brush your tongue until you get to the point where you feel like you're about to gag and then you hold it there and you brush it for like 15 seconds, okay? And then you, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, and then the next day, you do it again. And you keep brushing that area until you maybe you move it back like a quarter inch the next day, then the next day or next few days. And then eventually you're going to desensitize your tongue so you'll no longer have that gag reflex. That's a lot wow. easier than the complicated hand movement. Wow, look at you giving, helping out the girls who are trying to fuck like they're in porn. Yeah, exactly. Well, hey, I'm here for everybody. I do not discriminate. I don't judge. I'm not judging you for wanting that at all. I don't judge. I'm just saying. It's just impressive. Like, I want to be the best at everything. And yes, I I want the sex to be about me. But I also want to be, I'm an overachiever. I know you are, honey. (laughs) For better or for worse. Very hard on yourself. (laughs) I mean, it takes one to know one. But yeah, yeah, but I also don't think that's that's the best blowjob. But Again, some guys might like it because, again, a lot of the sex stuff has to do with your brain and what they're used to seeing. So they're like, a good blowjob means you're going to choke on my cock. Some guys, Hell. like, even love, like, when a girl throws up on it. I think that's a little too far for me okay, personally. I don't think, right, that's... <laughs> Personally, I don't want to barf. That only happens when you drink too much. That's happened, but not for me. But I remember in college, my friends would, like, throw up on dicks all the time because they were too drunk. But um, if a guy's into that and you're into... Remember this. Just because your guy is into something doesn't mean you have to sign up for that agenda. But and what I'll, about, okay, this is actually my question. I feel like a lot of girls will ask this. Yes. What if you, you and this guy have been dating for forever and there's certain things in bed that he's more into than you are, then wouldn't those ge- girls kind of get scared? They're like, fuck, if I don't do it, he's going to try to find to do it with someone else or eventually he's going to just get used to having sex the way she likes it. Like- well, it depends what the thing is. If it is a fetish, not just a fantasy, but a fetish means it's required for orgasm. Like if a guy has a latex fetish or a foot fetish, that means your foot has to be there for him to have great, we don't have to get off on fetishes now. But if it's just a fantasy, like he he is, you know, obsessed with what would be a sex act that you think, like threesomes or, or choking. Like choking and then throwing up on the dick. Uh, yeah. I mean, if you feel that, you know, listen, relationships are about compromise. So you could do that once a quarter. You could throw Got up on it. his dick. So that's a compromise. So you can do it here I guess and there. so if you want to. But then I also would encourage women to come with their own agenda. Yeah. What's your deal breaker? Like to me, we already covered this. If a guy is, goes down on me and I want him to go down on me every time. Got it. Every time. So, or something, or I'm going to get my toy or you have to use your fingers because it's like driving your car when it's not warmed up. I guess I grew up in Michigan, so you really needed to warm up your car. It was cold. You, it wouldn't drive. I couldn't get to high school if my car wasn't warmed up in the snow. I can't drive your penis. I can't have sex unless I'm warmed up. It just doesn't work. And that's why so many women have pain because they're not using lube and they're not getting turned on and they're not warming up. So anyway, but but to go back to your question about guy leaving you because you're not doing stuff, this is what when a guy's this is when a relationship's gonna end. It's Got when it. there's not enough variety. It's when you guys fall into a routine. You could be choking on his cock and throwing up every day for three years, but eventually that's going to get old, old as well. So yeah. how do you mix it up? How do you keep trying new things to 
together. And you don't have to show up with all these tips and tricks. You don't have to show up fully baked. I mean, you could in another format, but you don't have to show up that I know everything about what this partner wants. The most successful long-term relationships are couples who talk about this stuff openly. Right. And they're like, hey, what are you into? What am I into? I don't know. We Let's go figure it out together. Let's, this is when porn comes in handy because you can find things in porn that maybe you both, if you find the right porn that you're into or reading erotica or just, I have a great thing on my site called the yes, no, maybe list. And this is like such a gateway for couples to, to download it or look at it and it has like 70 sex acts on it. It has like anal, licking, kissing, touching, cuddling, um, spanking, all the things. And then you each fill it out and it has a yes, a no, and a maybe. And then you both both might find out that you're really into things that you didn't, you know, know. And then you could kind of use that. But you said the number one rule though, when it comes to talking about sex with your partner is to never do it in the bedroom. It has to happen outside the bedroom. Timing, tone, and turf. Timing, Tone, tone, tone. Your turf. tone is light and curious. The turf is outside the bedroom because in the bedroom, when typically when we bring up conversations in the bedroom, it's right after we feel rejected or something doesn't go away or we're already in an aroused state and things don't sink in. So the best time to do it is when you're hanging out, you're sitting on the couch, you're on a road trip or you're walking because it can be awkward to have conversations around sex. So I'm giving you some cheats because you don't have to make eye contact when you're hiking or driving, but you can still be intimate. And then the, the timing is when you're not in a bad mood, you're not mad about something, you're not hungry, you're not angry, you're not lonely, you're not tired, you're just like chilling and having a good time and then you're like hey and then your tone is curious but what if you have an insecure partner because i feel like i've tried because now that i think about it, i had this one partner that i tried to explain something about sex while we were driving so it was a very like just a passing conversation and i kid you not he never had sex with me after that what was your tone like i know you i know you the way i talk right now (laughs) so (laughs) i know your tone (laughs) this is because i think you have to work but sometimes your tone can be abrasive and intense and it might sound like maybe I said I I think you may have slept with a lot of women but I don't think you know how to make them come maybe I said that (laughs) so I I guess it's I should work on my I know you girl right yeah listen your tone is hey I realized that we haven't talked about our sex life that much and then you lead with something you love about their sex life I love the way we kiss I love when you finger my butthole but I don't love so much that I never orgasm you know, I've been thinking a lot about my org. This is, let's reframe it. Let's let's re- let's have a redo here. Hey, babe, driving, babe, sweetheart. You probably don't do that either. But just say, hey. So yeah, I was thinking about sex life. That was so hot last night when I didn't come again. Just kidding. <laughs> so it turned me so on that like I had to masturbate when you went to sleep just so I can finally orgasm. You're like, oh, I'm tired. I was up all night masturbating without you because I didn't come again. No, don't. Yeah. This is what not to do. But what you can do is say, yeah, this was. I want to talk about our sex life. I know, or this is really uncomfortable for me because I actually never talked about it, but I care about our relationship and our sex life so much that I'm going to share something really personal with you. I am really starting to understand and explore my own body and my own orgasm. And I was wondering if you would get curious with me in some exploration around it. I realized that I don't always come during penetration, like only 80% women don't either, but I don't. And so what I need is some light touch. I want to make out for 20 minutes. I want you to slowly undress me. Those kind of things. Give them suggestions. And then you say, well, what do you think about that? And then you say, is there anything you've been wanting to try? So it's a mutually beneficial discussion. It's not like you suck in bed. You don't make me come. Let's pull over and well, get some Well, my vagina McDonald's. already knew he wasn't the right guy for me. Yes. She was well, right. Another another one bites the dust. Exactly. It's okay, so. The faster we move through it, the better. This is the number one question that I feel like it's important for every time you're on my show. Because people is their number one favorite. The number one best oral method to make a woman come every single time please re-explain it i love it and i still sometimes i oh feel like oh my god i forgot the kiven method i haven't talked about that in so long the kiven method shout out to our last sponsor of the day it is better help if you're a regular listener to this podcast you know that i'm a big advocate for mental health especially right now with everything that's happening in the world that's why better help online counseling is here to help they offer licensed professional therapists who are trained to listen to help with issues including anxiety depression relationship issues 
issues, LGBT matters, family conflicts, and so much more. All you have to do is fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs, and then you get matched with your counselor in under 48 hours. You can easily schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus exchange unlimited messages to communicate with your therapist at your convenience. And everything you share is confidential. You can request a new counselor at any time and no additional charge. So join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced BetterHelp counselor. BetterHelp is an affordable option and you can get 10% off of your first month with the discount code 2 Tired. That's T O O T I R E D. So get started today at betterhelp.com slash too tired. Talk to a therapist online today and get the help that you need. We all deserve to put our mental health first. So start thinking about you and take care of your health. And I'm telling you, sign up for BetterHelp Online Counseling. It's the best. So the Kieran method, I talked about it so on my show a few years ago, and I have never, ever had so many people email me and call me and say, holy shit, this rocked my partner's world. And I think I have it on my Instagram too in the stories because it's like, or in the save, whatever it's the It's the one thing that I feel like I haven't tried yet that I'm dying oh, to dude, still try. I gotta tell about my partner about it, although he's pretty good. But now I've, I forget. See, I have so much sex facts in my brain. Okay, here's a the good The Kibba method. I wish I brought my Volvo puppet. It's okay. So, so. The Kivin method is all about covering the most surface area of the exterior part of the vagina, AKA the vulva. So your partner, you're lying down on your back. Your partner is coming in perpendicular. So you're lying down and I'm coming at you from the side. Yes. I'm not between your legs. I'm coming at you from the side. So what you do in this method is you, you take your tongue, you can do it with your fingers. Remember, always use lube end of story or make sure he's got a lot of saliva and you come at it from the left from from the the labia right okay so you're going to the labia and you're going like here's the labia and he's going back and forth with his tongue so it's not up and down it's a thigh to thigh movement and so this way from you're going labia you're going labia 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 to labia right and clitoris you're covering all of the surface area perpendicularly not up and down with your tongue with your fingers with the toy because you're stimulating all of the nerve endings that way Got it. So it's actually so I think <laughs> that cool. like, yeah, I just never realized that the best method for a man to go down on you to make you come when it comes to going down, it's not actually with this heavy between your legs. It's from the side because it, and it makes more sense because when you think about it, the tongue instead of the tongue moving up and down, up and down, it's exhausting. No, no, I mean, from side to side, from side to side, it's exhausting. When he's doing it from the side perpendicular, he literally just has to keep moving his tongue up and down, Mm -hmm. and that's so much easier. And you can also use your fingers, and I'm not saying this is going to work on every woman, but it was like, I've never, we were like, okay, enough with the Kevin method. I mean, that's why I haven't talked about it, and like... I still to this day get DMs from men and women saying, oh my God, my sex life has changed once I tried the Kivin method. Yep. Because, and like even yesterday, I, some guy thanked me. You like changed my sex life with my girlfriend because like I just tried this method from one of your older episodes and mm-hmm. it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing. I mean, for, again, though, though, there's, let me tell you two caveats. Some women, and these are typically the women who are the most, uh, orgasmic during penetration remember 20 percent of women they have very sensitive clitorises and they clitoral stimulation actually doesn't feel good for them um, because it's too much stimulation and that those are the women who have more internal sensations nerves and it's because the clitoris is closer to the vaginal opening for those women so that's one thing the other thing is like again if you have shame or you don't want a partner go down with you it might not work but if you are with a partner that you feel relaxed and safe i say try it out i, mean, I actually and then like you could it use better fingers too i feel like the thought of it makes me feel more comfortable with my vagina because i'm one of those people that feel self-conscious about somebody being down there it feels i feel like almost safer because then the guy's head is not literally opening up my vagina like a butterfly like examining like I'm in the gynecologist like he's from the side so I feel like he still gets to see my to me I feel like I'm most most self-conscious when the thought of like opening my all my lips up but he's from the side like he focuses like specifically on the clitoris he doesn't have to keep looking at ever all the other openings and he just like focuses on that just the clitoris it's the labia and here's the other thing 
he could have his finger on the clitoris and just be going labia to labia. But this way, because it depends where your clitoris is too, because for some women it's up a little bit more, but you're just going, yeah, you're going perpendicular. And, and another thing for women is for many women, they can have orgasms when their legs are closer together because you're you're tensing your pelvic, your kegel muscles, your pelvic floor muscles. And so this way, if you, you don't have to be as open, yeah. you could be, you could be, your legs could be more close. So you just have more access to. Yeah. And like, like for me, I know like that's how I pleasure myself is like, my legs are closer together and it goes back and forth like that and you just cover more surface area. How come like it feels like your legs start to open up a little more slower and slower as you're becoming like more turned on or whatever? Did you notice that? Is it like, is it, is, I don't know if it's just women, me, but I feel like my legs will start like to open up more legs. and more when I feel like more turned on or I'm about to orgasm or like more Because you're expanding. It. You're literally, your vulva. My your vulva's into, expanding yeah, so my legs are too. Your vulva's expanding. Yeah, I mean, because, cool. well, because when, because also remember, it's not just even your, your vulva, your vagina, it's your entire pelvic floor. Your pelvic floor muscles are your Kegel muscles. Those are the muscles that are responsible for orgasm. And so those muscles are becoming also flexed and they're actually doing an exercise. So it's it's just expanding this whole area. And this is all sensitive, our inner thighs. Yeah. And so I think we just like, oh, we want it. You know? It's actually really fascinating to me because I feel like I've never even was able to even have multiple orgasms with myself. Like I feel like I still haven't. No, I have had technically more two orgasms with someone else but I feel like it took me like during sex with my ex-boyfriend like 30 minutes before I can have my next one but I feel like after the few times you came on my podcast is when I learned to have multiple orgasms and how because of lube and we had these conversations before because I used to think that like lube was only for older women or if you're dry yep. down there and I used to be so proud for having and I'm such a wet pussy but like Bullshit. and then with you I learned that it's it actually lube helps with everything and everything. that's how I've been able to have multiple orgasms because you taught me to put lube there yep lube and on every night stand is and my dream you, yeah and when you lube it up that's like you have the first orgasm let's say on your full-on your clitoris and then yeah you move to the other sides of it so you it's like inside. outside your labia yeah outside your labia and, and it's just like amazing and the lube helps it it's a game changer so the lube so indiana university the lube makes it less painful for me to have multiple orgasms like, like one by one like consecutively lube is a requirement i think it's not just a suggestion i mean the thing is is that i want to eradicate the stigma around lube because you're right people think oh it's i'm dry there's discomfort there's a problem if i bring in lube then I am weak if you bring in a lube you are strong and you're gonna have more orgasms the Kinsey Institute did a study and that's where you know Alfred Kinsey they got the started talking about sex 50 60 fucking 70 years ago which was very revolutionary but but anyway today the Kinsey Institute did a study well probably five years ago that showed that when you add just a few drops of lube to every single sex scenario masturbation fingers mouth anything women are 80 percent more likely to orgasm yeah and we'll just say this again because this is what you learned on the last podcast that we did is that your wetness level as a woman is not an indicator of arousal you can't set your watch by it, it it's like there are times of the month because of our cycles where we're more wet there are times where we're turned on and not wet there's times when we're wet and not turned on so to be safeguard against that Add lube because maybe you're even wet at the beginning, but if someone's jackhammering you or going really fast, then you dry up. And you know what happens when you dry up? You have tears. You have vaginal tears. You know what oh. happens to you have vaginal tears? You get infections. So lube. Okay, I love that. Okay, so <laughs> next up, my next topic that I'd love to talk about, let's talk about threesomes. All right. So I've never had a threesome, but I am familiar with the fact that a lot of people are into threesomes and a lot of couples are also into threesomes. My personal opinion, I always viewed as threesomes are the end of a relationship. That's just my opinion. No, for a think lot that of, too. For a lot of couples, I believe it's with my ex-boyfriend, towards the end is when he starts to suggesting threesomes and that's how I knew because apparently cheating on me just wasn't good enough for him. He wanted me to actually be there, which was really cool of him to actually invite me to some of the, his sex parties. <laughs> so nice of him. But anyway, the point is that, in my opinion, a lot of times threesomes are the indicator that the relationship is about to be over. But there are those healthy couples that both partners are really into it. So mm -hmm. my question to you when it comes to threesomes is how does somebody, what are the rules to inviting a third person into your relationship when it comes to sex? That's a really good question. So the rules are this. <laughs> I'll tell you how not to do it, how your ex did it. <laughs> that's not how you do it. And that's why it gets a really bad rap. You can't have a threesome to save your relationship. You don't have a threesome to spice it up. You don't have a threesome to see if you are compatible now. No, you have a threesome. The couples that have the very best, the most success with threesomes, and let me just say, side note, it is the most common fantasy for men and for women. Yeah. So the most 
the best way to have a threesome is to have lots of discussion ahead of time and boundaries around it because you it's it's you have to be on the same page you have to make sure that you both want it you can't get i get this question all the time how do i get my partner to have a threesome you're not going to get your partner to have a threesome you don't want to get your partner to have a threesome you don't want to talk her into it so 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 she'll you know come along for the ride that is a disaster waiting to happen you want to have a threesome because you think it'll be a new a really fun intimate experience you want to see your partner in the throes of passion it would be a new thing for you guys to share together a lot of couples who have healthy threesomes they they dirty talk it they have a great memory they use that during masturbation so the first thing is are you talking about do you want to start with how you bring it up or how to do it how to bring it up um well, because usually there's one person that brings it up and wants it. But I, I think, think men are get scared to bring it up because they assume they think that means that the girl is the girl's going to think that they um, want to look elsewhere. They but I fuck feel their like best friend or something. Yeah, I feel like a lot of times it, it feels more safe for men in, in healthy relationships when the woman brings it up and she kind of shows pictures of other girls. And she's like, babe, what do you think of these girls? If right? that works and you're doing it genuinely because you want it not to turn your partner on, then great. But yeah, I also think, don't be that girl. Don't that's be that a girl. pick me girl. And the only reason you're having a threesome is not because you feel safe in the relationship it's because you feel like you're about to lose him and then you invite a third person in the relationship because then your relationship will end so i agree with emily in that way disaster to do that i mean i hope that this i hope that the, for the women listening to this show that when this is over they're gonna have a really different perspective now on their sex game like it's gonna flip it on their head like happened to you that you're gonna realize that you have to leave you should be bringing to the table what turns you on and what you want don't ever change who you are and to right. become a sexual being for your partner that never works it's not authentic it's not who you are figure out what your fantasies are and bring those to the table now for many women they do have fantasies about being with another woman and their partner they want to be with two guys um and that's that's really cool too but the most important thing is that you you have a threesome in a committed relationship when you are in super solid ground everything's going well you have incredible trust you talk about things you have great sex together like your sex is through the roof and now you're like what else could we do oh you know i actually yeah. you know do you ever fantasize about being with another woman I think it would be so hot to see you turned on by somebody do yeah. you ever fantasize about that and then your partner could say yes or no or you know the and partner's then, like yeah I do fantasize about being with other women and without you and then you're like oh we should break up right exactly let's have the conversation that way <laughs> yeah. right it's actually but you're not there I'm having this fantasy my eyes are closed you're just there's like two girls are really hot oh shit you're not there <laughs> Wow, we should talk about this. Yeah. But, so how do you approach the threesome? Um, I think that you, you approach it by saying, listen, if you've never talked about your sex life, you do not lead the threesome conversation because Violet is Violet point, point, pointed out, and again, we're speaking to heterosexual couples. If a guy says to a woman, hey, I think it'd be really hot to have a threesome, the first thing we think is which one of my friends, who do you want to fuck, who you yeah. having sex with? Are you kidding me? We don't me? trust that. But another way to approach it is having this timing, tone, and turf conversation about your sex life outside the bedroom and saying, you know, our sex life has been so hot lately and I realize we've never talked about our fantasies. Why don't we explore together some things that would be really hot? Again, go to sexwithemily.com, get the yes, no, maybe list, or just say like, you know, I fantasize about using my toy with you. I fantasize about you talking dirty to me. Yeah. I fan and then you have that conversation. Then you have it again. Let's say no one brought up a third. Next time, what, you know, I've been thinking about our fantasy conversation and I just think it would be so hot to have to have a threesome with you and to have that experience. So let's say you both kind of agree and you get on board. Then what you do is you don't just go find a third. You talk about it. You talk about your boundaries. Boundaries are so Huge. important because Number one. some girls like don't want their boyfriend to fuck the other girl. They just want, they both give head or whatever. She can go down and they can go down each other, the two girls. But like some girls are like, you like no you better not fucking fuck that no girl. No kissing, no penetration. Yeah. Um, have so to use you may not know that person. I'd rather be a stranger. It's only a one-time thing. Exactly. It's someone out of town. We're going to go to Vegas. We're going to find someone on an app that we don't know. We're going to, you know, yeah. And some people are like, I only want a friend because I feel safe. So you have to discuss the boundaries. You have to have a safe word too. This is the best time to have a safe word because what if you get into the moment and it 
you're freaking out. You're like, oh God, I didn't think it would be like this. Do you recommend a stranger or do you say it doesn't matter if it's a friend or a stranger? Because what if it's a friend and then every time you see your friend in your back of your mind, you're like, what if you you thought you were so secure in the relationship? You invite your friend into the bedroom. Oh, the three of you fuck. And then you see the connection between your friend and your partner and you go, holy shit. And now you feel intimidated every time they're together because you're like, is there something more here? Yeah, I, I, my recommendation is do not do it with a friend. Okay, that's what I Don't thought. do it with someone you know. I, I think that that, could be a recipe for disaster because exactly you'll never unsee that you'll never be able to unsee their connection and so i think that that is just threesomes are already can be really tricky ground that to bring in someone you know could be disastrous now again some couples have it totally works for them so i think just figuring out like how are we going to find a third is it a man or a woman is it a trans person where are we at and then my next step once you decide all this stuff is to start to role play it start to dirty talk it right now i'm picturing a girl going down on you and then i'm penetrating you or i'm fucking you or we're using this or we're in vegas or we're in a tropical location and then you dirty talk it to each other you role play it yeah and that can be really hot in the moment so what if you do it a one-time thing and then one your partner whether you're the girl or the boy your partner decides gets so excited by it and now your partner wants to do it again and you were like shit this was just like a birthday anniversary surprise or whatever yeah this is now what do you do now because you open the door then once you have a threesome don't you kind of open the door to those type of things you could but if you again we're talking about couples who aren't are on solid ground in my experience unless you're coming to a relationship already being open maybe you're you know swinger or you you are you have an open lifestyle i think it's really helpful to already be truly committed be exploring each other's bodies have a really solid have a really good sex life and then bring someone else in and then what you do because after then you have the threesome you discuss it you do like a a play-by-play what we like what we didn't like and it's always a risk i mean you could have a stranger come in and your partner falls in love with them i mean that could happen too your partner yeah. could meet someone at the coffee shop so it's like it and it's always know. a risk you never know i guess you're right with the boundaries conversation because i think even like i've had guys that i've dated and then like while we were dating, I still, like, I didn't think it was a big deal if I wanted to kiss another girl. But, like, I had this one guy yeah. that I was dating because we never discussed boundaries where I kissed another girl in front of him on accident, whatever. And then he, like, stormed down. He was so upset and I was so confused. I was like, what's the big deal? Like, I thought guys think this is hot. Yeah. And I was just, like, into the moment. But to him, it was, like, cheating. And I feel like it that's where cheating. boundaries are important. Absolutely. I think that we need to discuss these things, even not with a threesome, but, like, are we committed? What does that mean? Like, are you, can you have an emotional affair? You know, like that, that, that could be just as bad, you know, problematic as well. So I just think that boundaries are not just for threesomes. It's for all relationships, but the boundaries are li- literally covering every ground and then making sure that you're both attracted to the person. You know, I, I don't think you should just plan a whole night and have the person show up, have coffee with them, have a drink with them, yeah. do a Zoom call, like figure out, because you have to both be attracted. If you, what if you're not? And then yeah. what? Then what yeah. are you do? your partner's like, I thought we were ready to go and their pants are down. You're like, this person is not my jam. So yeah. Okay, so that's good to know. So have the conversation first. Make sure you're in a very healthy relationship before you move forward with the yes. threesome. Make sure it's not to save your relationship. And then number two, set all the boundaries. Do not hold back because you're about to enter something that you didn't enter before. So Yeah, it's a big thing. Yeah. It's a really big move to bring a third into the relationship. And you yeah. want to make sure that it's safe and why you're doing it. And yes, it is true. Your partner could just prefer the threesome. But honestly, then that's not your part. Again, it hurts. It does hurt. But then you find out. Not yeah. Your, not if your partner fell in love with the third person that you're with, then no offense, it would most likely would have happened sooner or later. They would have fell in love with somebody that walked into Starbucks or whatever, because it means yep. you guys weren't as strong as you were before. But yeah, it is, I think, always scary to bring in a third person. So again, I wouldn't do it personally for myself. Actually, I guess never say never since I never say never. Girls. So yeah, maybe never say never. But the, from where I've been, I'm too afraid to do that. But Maybe you're not. So I do recommend if you're not, then you should go ahead and do it. Everyone's yep. different in their sex life. You know, that's exactly. the thing. And I would say that you also, Violet, if I may be so bold, you dated guys that you didn't trust and that weren't great guys. So you might change if you get into a healthy relationship. Right. T- no. Threesomes, I no, okay. it would not be okay. Unless it was like an anniversary thing, but that's or just me. Girl, I'm yeah, too, don't. Maybe not. I'm too jealous. Okay, got it. But again, but the, who see, knows? Never say never. That's so good to know that you get jealous. So, yeah. so if you know that, I would say steer clear of threesomes. Run for your fucking life. That is a disaster. Like that if is I a disaster. saw the guy I'm with, I'm in love with, get even near another girl's vagina, I feel like my first instinct would be to like 
to get violent and I or yeah. to just like <laughs> we don't you want know that. block him and never speak to him again even though I'm the one that asked for it. So like I, love I just how don't. well you know yourself. Yeah, I think as long as you're self-aware. So for me, I'm too jealous, so I can't do that. But I don't, I don't not recommend it to other women if they feel safe in their yeah. relationship. There's a lot of good examples that couples who really make it work and it's their thing, and yeah. also couples do it sometimes and they don't do it for a while and then they do it again and yeah, you know, yeah. Okay, my next question is use protection. Yeah, sure. My next, <laughs> sorry, my next question is uh, is blue balls a real thing for guys? Not to the extent to which they say, do not ever finish off somebody or have sex with them because they have blue balls. Yes, when they then start to get an erection, when they have an erection and they can't release it, it might like hurt for a second that it can happen. Men do experience testicular pain. They can have pain. But then guess what? They fucking ejaculate and it's over. It is not, you're not damaging them for life. Their, their balls are not going to be permanently upset. So no, I, I think it's just been used as another tool for women to acquiesce and have to keep sucking that dick. To keep it's like, oh, I'm going to get a blue ball yeah. today, please. I mean, in high school, I think I did. High, high school, school guys, that? no, not as much, but I feel like when you were younger, guys yeah. are always like, oh no, I'm going to get blue balls. It's so painful. Yeah, you have no idea. And then pleasers. you feel guilty. Yeah. I used to think that I, I had to, like, I used to think that I had to honor what men, I used to think that sex was all about pleasing men. And so I was like, oh, well, I don't want you to have that situation. So yes, it's a real thing, but it's not our concern. Can women get blue balls? Women can, but you know what the cool thing about women is that we can get really aroused and be paid, but then we could just go, it's like, it's, then we just, it's, I think that there's actually something that's really hot to, it's sort of edging. So mm -hmm. edging is a really cool practice for men and for women where you delay your orgasm until the point where you're about to ejaculate. So you, you kind of, when you're about to come or ejaculate, you kind of go back down again. So you're about, you get like, if you think of like the arousal cycle on a scale from one, you're not turned on and 10, you're about to have an orgasm. If you masturbate or you get turned on to like an eight and then you bring it down like a 9.5 and then you bring it down to a, to a five or, and then you bring it back up. The more you prolong, it, it's a it's a prolonging of your orgasm. And then once you finally do come, it can be so explosive. Edging is a great method. You've talked about this before. For men who come too fast, for men who come prematurely, that's a way for you to, to kind of work with them instead of shaming them in the bedroom for coming too fast because they're just so excited to be there. You do you do that method edging, which is like you you're he's about to come, so then you kind of back off a yep. little and so on. But I feel like I've tried edging with myself before to yes, teach myself. Women, it's so hot how to orgasm when I was masturbating and I feel like for me when I tried it with myself I then I couldn't orgasm at all and then I regretted like I regretted that I didn't finish off my orgasm so I was well, kind of got distracted really like, I think if you breathe and you're like I'm going to edge that don't I, I would love you not to make that one situation your your got truth. it yeah so edging is a great practice for women to to kind of and that's also I should have mentioned this is that if you're trying to have multiple orgasms you know, edging is a really fun practice too. Although, yeah, I mean, I guess it could be a good second practice or you're more likely to have more intense orgasms because you're you're prolonging your arousal. And for men, yeah, it can be a great way for men to learn ejaculatory control so they don't come as quickly. It is the method. Yeah. Stop, start method, edging. I love that. Um, how come some women pee during set when they orgasm? Uh, because it's very close because your bladder, listen, women can empty their bladder and then still like release some pee for some women. It's, a, it's ejaculate. Like with female ejaculate is a real thing. We release fluid. It's where the skein's glands are right next to the urethra where our bladder gets filled up. So the skein's glands, um, is where the like fluid can start to build. And so, but it comes, it be releases through the urethra, which is where urine releases from. So if they look at things, if they look at studies of female ejaculate and they put it in a test tube and they look or they look at put it in the you know they look at it in the lab they find that there are traces of urine and there's also um fluids prostatic prostatic fluid which is just like the male prostate it's what happens with with the man but for women so it's a mix of fluids but it could be pee it could be urine and it's just because you're applying so much pressure there that it and just you're it fills like up. releasing that's yeah, how women releasing. can like excellent that's how women gas can squirt yeah and like queef and or gas queef and all that because you're, you're just like you're yeah. letting it you're letting go of control down there yeah and trying to relax it's air too well queefing is air plunging and sex is like you are applying pressure to your abdomen like you your bladder that could that could happen and i think i have a trick for queefing by the way and i feel like i've talked about it before and it's the best trick ever and i've done it all my years with my ex-boyfriend it's basically when we're switching positions and like 
because we were younger and he jackrabbit fucked me because he just didn't know That's any what better, you do whatever. As a kid. He puts all this air in my vagina and we're switching positions. I put my finger inside my vagina and I and I and I push. And when you push and you the finger goes inside your vagina, the air comes out without making any noise as we're switching positions. So I do it really quickly and then we go to the next position. My vagina is already no air again and ready to fuck. And that's how I avoided any noise. Yeah, it literally works. Okay. You put your but finger in I would also push. say let's normalize oh. queefing. But also let's normalize queefing. Who cares? <laughs> Sex is messy and it's loud. Someone is plunging into you as a woman. We are a cavernous, we have a cavernous hole. And that is going to be because of the pressure. It's going to be. Yeah, why, the queefing why is not your we, fault. Why are we, it's not our fault. And who cares? We're the ones who make queefing weird. If we just keep going, like yeah. it didn't happen. Sex is messy. Sex is dirty. You queef, you make noises, throw a towel down and get on with it. Whatever. Like this guys stuff pisses me Guys don't even care. Off. I feel like guys keep going they and you're the care. one that starts giggling. You're like, oh my God, did you hear that? And he's like, yeah. yeah don't even going? say anything. Yeah. They don't care. Listen, if you yeah. don't care, they don't care. Women have to learn to just be our best. We are not our best sexual advocates and we really need to be. I agree. I agree with that. But anyway, if you do want to try my method, it is really good. <laughs> you could good. also try that. Yeah, it is dope. Like imagine she, the girl tries to like avoid queefing and then she pull, she pushes and she farts instead. And then she's like, fuck, how do I deal with like that? Violet. They're going to be like, first you tried to teach me to gag and that didn't work. And now you're trying to teach me not to queef. And, that and I'm work. farting. Damn it. <laughs> Um, my bad, sorry, but try it. Um, okay, so the next topic I really want to discuss, which I think is so important, is STDs. And I did talk about STDs briefly because a lot of you asked me to talk about herpes. Um, it was on my episode with um, Hannah from Burning in Hell, and we talked about STDs, and I also told you guys that research found from a few years ago that 70 to 80% of people in big cities have some type of strain of yep. herpes. It's very common to get to in your lifetime to get an STD. And it's also very common these days in big cities to have some type of herpes, whether it's a cold sore, whether it's in your blood, whether it's genital herpes, it's very common. And a lot of women reached out to me because they said that they don't feel comfortable anymore. They get, like, it's one thing already to feel rejected sometimes by men. It's another thing now, it's an added extra thing where they also have herpes and they don't know what to tell their partner, so. Yeah, it's very, very common. And a lot of times we could be a carrier and not know it. but. If you have herpes, it is not a death sentence. It doesn't mean that you are not going to be able to have an active sex life again. And I think the more honest we, the more that we talk about it and the less, the less shame we're gonna have, the more we normalize it. I mean, it is a very large percentage of people who have have a strain of herpes. You maybe you have it on your mouth and it gets transferred or your partner goes down on you. I mean, that's there's so many ways to get it. And the truth is, if you do have it, um, we have a lot of information about this as well on my site and my podcast. We talk about it a lot, but you should just, you, you have to make sure that you, you take a, maybe you take a daily suppressant if you have a lot of outbreaks. You will not be able to contract the virus if you are taking a suppressant. When you have an outbreak, then you should avoid any sex activity. But I think that you just have to realize that like you can still have a really active, healthy sex life. And I think it's important to be honest with your partners and tell them that this is what I have herpes and this is what I do for it. It will not be contracted this way if I take my suppressant or we can use condoms, but it's way less likely to transfer. And I just think that it's really sad that people think that it is such a um, a, a problem that it's going to prevent them from being sexually yeah. healthy. So can you confirm that people who do have some type of uh, herpes, they still have a fulfilling sex life if they choose Absolutely. to have? 100%. So many people have fulfilling sex life. Absolutely. Or that would mean that like a third of the people are not having or coming. Yeah. I feel like I'm more even careful these days to even make like a herpes joke with someone because like whoever I'm talking to, like I don't know if they actually do have some type of herpes. I don't. But I like I, it doesn't stop, it doesn't prevent me from wanting to date somebody just because yeah. they have some type of Good. herpes. Let's like say that me neither. I yeah. had a guy say I have herpes and I take Valtrex. I'm like, okay, great, let's do it. Yeah, like, as I long don't... as like they're they're taking care of it, they're aware of it, and I think it is important to have that discussion like before you you head to the bedroom. Yeah, get a test, get an STI yeah. test. STI, yeah. it's it's now called STIs and STDs. Um, sexually transmitted infections or sexually transmitted diseases because some are infections yeah. and some are diseases. But it's, yeah, get tested every six months. Yeah. You know, use but condoms. It hasn't I know you don't want to use condoms, but you yeah. should. It hasn't stopped me from dating somebody knowing that they have some type of that. And also I feel like that's where I stopped making those jokes now. If they're like, oh, I'm feeling sick. And it used to be like, oh, herpes. But now I'm like, oh shit, they actually could have herpes. So now it's like, it's yeah, not even that's funny. Good. Let's, so we just, get to change the narrative. We get yeah. to be accepting and open towards this stuff. So then what about like other type of STDs? Um, like, okay, so if you get something like chlamydia or gonorrhea, 
uh, you will have to take an antibiotic and you can knock that out. So that is not going to be with you for the rest of your life like herpes is. HPV, you can get the vaccine before age 28 to kind of prevent that. But so many people, I think, have HPV now. And if you never had HPV, you're lying. Everyone has HPV. Has Everyone has so, had HPV at so one point in their life. There's even a comedian that says, if you've never had HPV, then you go out there and you go get it. <laughs> because shut the fuck up. Everyone's had HPV at least once in their lifetime. I've had I've had HPV. My ex-boyfriend gave me, because men can carry it without you knowing, without them knowing it. And women are the ones that really can contract it and can affect them. Uh, there's two types of HPVs. And I got the HPV that was cancerous. Um, years ago and they had to scrape inside my uterus or something and take something out for testing because usually a lot of times when you get HPV after like a few periods it can go away for me it didn't go away because I had the cancerous type and they had to scrape something inside my uterus it was a little painful and then we made it go away we still have to have your yearly checkups to make sure that it doesn't come back and that was really scary for me um, and I was really upset about that part but thankfully like i'm fine but i just want to normalize hpv yeah. because every woman i feel like at least once it's in very, her lifetime very very common it. it's so common yep there are um there's a hundred different varieties of hpv some can cause warts some cause different types of cancer um like you're saying and you do um you know and it's transmitted sexually through anal it's transmitted sexually through anal um skin to skin contact and in a lot of cases, our immune system can defeat an HPV um, infection before it becomes something else. Yeah. But a lot of times it, it doesn't. And you just have like for to. for me. Yeah. You still have to uh, take care of it. And things that the risk factors are the number of sexual partners you've had, your age, if you have a weakened immune system. Um, you c it can lead to other things like cancer or warts and all those things. But there are vaccines that you can take. But if you... If you do have it again, same thing, not a death sentence, just be honest with your partner. It's a lot more common than we think. It's a lot more common than we think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and you could be a carrier of it and not know that you have it. Like so most then, men. A lot men are more men. likely to be carriers of it. So you guys, yeah. it is tricky. I mean, there's a lot more uh, viruses that we can get right now. Like that is a virus that you will have with you. But, you know, if you take precautions and you're honest about it, you know, and you have a healthy immune system. Listen, the best way to have healthy sex and to be a healthy being is to have an overall healthy yeah. life. To eat well, to exercise, to get checkups, to do all those things. Your nutrition, all of it plays a role in your immune system. If you have, a, again, strengthened immune system, you'd be less likely to contract any of these diseases. Wait, I feel like there's one question I didn't ask you. Are curved dicks, guys with curved dicks, are they like, are they like the blessing of God? Like, are those the guys that are like it? For some Because I used to think curved dicks were weird, but the more Same. I've gone older and I talk to girls, those are the guys that give my friends orgasms. Yeah, I think if your curved dick is curving in the correct position, correct way, that it could be hitting your G spot, which is for your G area, which is for many women located on the uh, the anterior wall of the vagina, the exterior wall of the vagina, inside about an inch or two in. And so if your penis happens to be curving that way, it could hit the clitoris in a great area. But yeah, men's penises curve all the time. If Again, there's not one kind of penis. There's not one kind of vulva or vagina. They're all different. You could also get the impact of a curved penis by putting them, sitting on a pillow, changing your position. You could still have a partner hit that spot. And yes, I think that for some women whose curved penises work for them, I think that they also are more likely to have internal orgasms with partners. So wow. I think like some women could have a curved penis and nothing happens. But it's something to be shameful about. And guys, don't freak out if your penis is curved. No, it's actually, apparently it's more amazing. It can be. Can a woman get an orgasm from anal? Yes. But we've talked about it before. And I had friends that used to be like, oh, I love anal so much. It makes me so horny. But I found out with you that when you get an orgasm from anal, it's because it somehow hits your vaginal walls. It hits, it's not yep. because you actually can come from your butthole for a woman. Right. So what happens is that you're stimulating... That, that there's like a little thin membrane when you have a penis inside of you. And and so what can, when you have a penis inside of you or a dildo or a vibrator or whatever, it can hit the membrane that is that is hitting your, your G area inside. So then as a result of that, you could have an orgasm. Now, for some women, it can also be like they could be rubbing their clitoris at the same time. They could be grinding so they could also have an orgasm that way. But for women who are orgasmic and who probably have more internal orgasms, they might be more likely to... Um, come during anal now there's some women who can only come during anal um because of that positioning of the of where again every woman is different not only in the way they look 
not only the way their genitals look, but they're different in where it's placed. So anal might be great for some women because it's a sweet spot of the penis goes in and it just is able to hit the right spot of their, you know. Yeah. Um, so I love a finger up my butthole for sure. Yeah. I one or two, one, one finger up yeah, there. Yeah, feels is, really good too, right? It feels too, really right? nice. Yeah. During sex or loop. during like going down or during yeah, anything. Yeah, I love it. It feels, yeah, there's something about like suddenly you, like filling up all your holes when you're having sex. Yes. It's just awesome. And also if you want, <laughs> it is awesome. It can feel really, really good if you're open to it. I think also some women just feel shameful around that as well. But it can feel great. There's a lot of nerve endings. Even on the outside, like the rectum or the sphincter, the sphincter, the sphincter, the sphincter muscles. Um, on the outside of the anal opening, if you just take some lube, your partner can just use their fingers and go around there. It might That might feel really good too. And the good thing about smaller dicks out there is that it's much more pleasurable to have anal with them. It can be. Yep. I mean, big dicks are really like, I feel like are a little harder a big to have dick the anal. would be harder. You'd have to really like train. You got to train for anal. Don't go from zero. Don't go from zero to anal. You really do have to train for anal. And I've given advice before on how to have like proper anal. And that's like for, I believe like you should have like an, do an enema or something before that, like not be right before it, like a few hours before that. And then like the best trick afterwards is to take a little butt plug, put it up your butthole and like leave it in there for 30 minutes or something before you start to have sex. So then you can open it up a little. But also I feel like, I feel like, I feel like your holes somehow open up a little when you are horny and you're having sex because Same. that's how you can go from set from your vagina like them switching going yep. from your vag vagina hole straight to your butt like, yeah because you're I more feel like aroused. I'm not saying the if a woman scientific. is clitoris if a woman if you're already aroused and you have an orgasm anal will be more comfortable with you because you're already aroused and engorged like we talked about the blood flow you you so it might be easier but remember this the anus is not self lubricating like the vagina so you have to use lube every time you have to apply lube reapply reapply every time every you Every time. There is no wet. There is no lubrication in an anus. There is none. But don't you feel like sometimes there's some liquid in the Yeah, because, butthole? because what if, is that? if you're really wet, then maybe you could be your, like the fluids from your vagina could be dripping into your anus. But your anus oh. is not going to lubricate itself. And so that's what it is. And so you have to remember that you just, you can go from vaginal to anal, but never go from anal to vaginal. Ever. Please because that's don't. where you get a bacterial infection. Don't do that. I've learned this the hard way. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you get a yeast infection, a UTI, it fucks you up. Oh do my God, not. you did that? With my ex-boyfriend, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, most people. See, you know how many women you're saving right now? Yeah, well, because he, when we're young, the, the boys watch young. so much porn, and then they just think that it's like your body is just like their like little porn tem temple to try things out on you, and then they just keep going from hole to hole. You're just so confused about what's happening at this point. You're not yep. even enjoying it. And next thing you know, you have a UTI. You're like, great, now I'm peeing yep. blood. Yep, exactly. Do not do that. <laughs> do not make your body a porn temple. No. Unless you want to. Yeah, so it's okay um, from vagina to butthole, but it's not okay from butthole to vagina. Exactly, and go slow. And here's the thing about anal. So many women have a really bad first-time experience because their partner goes really shoves fast. It in. Shoves it in. No lube. So that's why you go slow and start with, like, they could be massaging your anus. They could kind of, you want them to open it up, and, like, they could just be, you know, outside of it for a while and making sure you breathe a lot. You got to breathe, go slow, and use lube. Those are my also, best tips. Let's just put it out there. Yeah. If you're going to have anal with your partner, and this is for the boys listening, I'm sorry, but you have to accept the fact that the girl may shit on you a little. And you can't get grossed out because at the end of the day, that's the risk you're willing to take when you decide to put your penis inside exactly. of her butthole. Men get so grossed out by this stuff that women do or the, the queefing and whatever. No, you can't get grossed out by it. I know you also said the thing about an enema. I don't think that you need an enema if you know your natural bodily flu, you know your like bowel and you need to go have a huge dinner. But also you could get an enema a store about one my recommendation is to take out the vinegar and just fill it with warm water oh yeah yes yes i'm sorry that is the one thing i forgot to say when you if you are doing an enema which you don't have to do not <laughs> do not do the full enema like it should be it's more it's like better if it's water like don't do it with the vinegar stuff because then you're gonna have like weird things that people are gonna be licking out of your um, leaking out of your butthole and you don't want that experience when you're having sex so it's better if you actually have an enema with like you t you pour it out and you just put regular water. water in there warm water in there yep. and then you 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 make sure to like let everything out of your butthole if it was anything yes, was still in there exactly that's good that's what you do God, i haven't had anal so in so long but i feel like i know so much about anal. i know seriously today's <laughs> a day and also experiment on your own use a butt plug use a finger again masturbation is your ticket 
to incredible sex. Yeah, I've fingered my butthole before when I've been when I've masturbated just to like just to try it out to see like how it feels before I do it with a partner. You have to be better, but your nails, you got to be careful because the, the yeah, reptile do tissue is so thin. Don't do it with fake nails. Um, make sure that your nails are trimmed and they're clean and they're yeah. short. You got to keep one nail short. Don't try to finger your partner's butthole with your fake nails because you're just going to end up scratching him. Exactly. And that is painful and that they is can painful. get an infection. Yeah, that is painful. All right. Well, I feel like we discussed a lot of like amazing things. <laughs> it's like we did. Thank you for having me. We covered a lot. Thank you for coming on. So where can people find you? Everything is at sexwithemily.com. My podcast is Sex With Emily. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, iTunes. Um, that's what you do. You can send me your questions to feedback at sexwithemily.com or call in to my Sirius XM radio show every night, 888 Eight two seven seven, and also I want to say that my website has fifteen years of material, blogs, videos, everything to help people have better sex. Okay, Love so it. is there anything you feel like I didn't ask you? No, I think you've asked me everything. This has been great, but I'll be back, babe. This is our, this is what we do. I yeah. think you've asked me everything that you that we cover, and then they could go back and listen to the last two episodes. Yeah, and also you guys, you can check out my episodes with her with Emily on her podcast, Sex with Emily. I've been twice already. She's on been it. twice. You've been yeah. twice or three times. Twice, I think. I think three times. No, once was on your radio show. Okay, got it. But they so put that in the podcast. podcast. Yeah, they're really good. We do. Sure, I don't know. Like I said, we release two to three a week, and they're on all different topics. We have guests, we have callers, we have emails. And I've got 15 years of podcasts. There's a lot yeah. of stuff there. So have fun. Go for it. Okay. Well, thank you all so much for coming on. Um, definitely check out Emily Sex with Emily. DM her if you have any questions. Make sure to follow her. Subscribe to her podcast. And anyway, you guys, thank you so much for listening for another episode of Too Tired to Be Crazy on every Thursday with me, Viola Benson, your host. I love you guys so much. And I hope you have the most fulfilling sex life ever after this episode. Love you. Bye.